Hi, Adobe community. Welcome to the weekly Adobe Creative Educator Show. We're so excited to be here with you today. If you are just joining in, I see a couple people have already joined in the chat. Nice to see you, Marlene and Nick. Uh, please post in the chat where you're joining us from today. Um, we have a really special guest, uh, Manuel Herrera, who will introduce himself in a moment. Um, but today we are going to be sharing how to help all children tell their story through sketch noting. So we'll have um, go through the the uh, creative process of define, create, and reflect, um, and then actually have time for hands-on uh, with Adobe Fresco. Um, so again, if you're just joining in, please um, post in the chat where you're joining us from. And I'm going to go ahead and share again. We have this show, the Adobe Creative Educator Show, every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Pacific time. And we go through the uh, creative process of define, create, and reflect. So we'll be going through that process today, and um, hopefully it's something that you can use with your students, whether it's uh, virtually or even at home uh, with your own kids. Um, so for those who I haven't met, uh, my name is Clara. I'm joining you today from my home in San Francisco. Um, I'm on the Adobe Education team and lead our educator community programs. And without further ado, I would like to hand it off um, to my partner in crime, uh, Tanya Avrith. Um, Let's go ahead. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I know we were on a bit of a break, but we're so excited to be back. And I'm so excited about <laughs> our guest today. This is like hey, such a treat. I love Manuel so much. Look at that face. So we're gonna be <laughs> we're gonna have Manuel on this uh, this show today, and he's gonna walk us through uh, a really fun uh, session. So if you have uh, an iPad handy and you want to join along or even if you have a paper and pencil i'm sure he'll kind of give you some options please get that together because we're going to be doing some activity today um so with uh, i'm going to just kind of let manuel introduce himself because like he needs no introduction he's manuel <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, we happen to be friends too. So Manuel, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you work? What do you do? Sure. I want to talk about it. So I, first I have to say hi to my friend Marlene who is in the chat. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are childhood friends. Uh, she's in education and it's kind of cool. We've been trying to figure out how for her to, to get to see what the stuff that I do. So it's kind of it's funny that, uh, that we're doing this. I don't know, it's, it's, it's just kind of nice. Um, so yes, my name is Manuel Herrera. Um, I have a fancy title this year. Again, uh, I'm the Learning Services Coordinator for the Afton School District, uh, school district here in St. Louis. Um, it's a new role, so my role will be pretty much connecting schools or our schools with um, local businesses and industries and trying to give our kids some actual real world um, experiences and kind of move more work towards personalized learning in a, in a way that makes sense to kids, which is exciting. So. Cool. and figure out how to make that happen. Uh, that I'll still do amazing. some support with you. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really cool. I just came from a luncheon. I went to a luncheon for the Chamber of Commerce for Afton. So it was at a <laughs> That top is ridiculous. I know. <laughs> and a I, that is so cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared <laughs> because it's it's very new. So, I, you know, I'll do that. I'll do some stuff with, with teachers still in the classroom. Um, but uh, it'll be a different role in the classroom. I'll kind of be... Um, facilitating some some uh, interaction no, 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 with no. this is some pioneer work that you're going to be doing I hope so. that's awesome so yeah so yeah that's I, I do that and then I also um, I, I have opportunities to go around and speak to kids and teachers um, and school districts cross country and that's how I met you two uh, had a chance yeah. to kind of cross paths with uh, teaching sketch noting and visual thinking um, so yeah, those are that's kind of two of my my two primary roles in life, in addition to to being dad. So uh, I'm excited to share this. This is fun, as Marlene knows. Like I've been drawing since I was a kid, and so it's kind of funny to um, see teachers kind of latch onto this and, and use it in a, in a in a meaningful way. Yeah, that is such a cool role. And how how has that been? You know, I know it's been a really um, difficult year for so many educators and students and families trying to figure out how to navigate distance learning, many for the first time. Um, how is that going to be with your with your new role as you're connecting, you know, students to industry and and other opportunities? You know, that's that's going to be the big challenge is, you yeah. know, we may not have face to face as much as we used to or we did. 
Um, mm-hmm. So some of those connections are going to be virtual. You know, we've been doing it um, yeah. for quite some time, just with our roles in general, just connecting people across the country. But um, that's a new skill set to t- teach kids um, is to kind of telework and what's that look like and what are expectations and what are norms, um, what are proper ways to to network. Um, so it'll be interesting. It'll be a different skill set. Telework. I feel like I, that that's like a mix of like old and new. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, it, it'll be tough. It'll be an, it'll be a new challenge. It's not just teaching, you know, content. It's also teaching kids how to, how to interact with other adults in a professional manner. So uh, yeah. I'm excited for it. Uh, I'm nervous for it, but um, yeah, it'll be a challenge. I, I don't know how we're gonna we're gonna tackle that every time we. <laughs> <laughs> like you're honestly like. I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything keeps changing. I keep we keep hearing different things about school. What's school going to look like? And you know, I heard yeah. more, more different things today. So um, I don't know. It's fun. It keeps keeps you on your toes and keeps the day different. So I well, like. We're that. all in it together. The of reality course. is that this is all unchartered, and we can make this is a great opportunity to fail forward, right? And like yeah, make mistakes and. And figure that out. I, and and I know, like you mentioned, that you have kids like yourself. They're so cute. I see them on Facebook, I and they're like, <laughs> they're so adorable. And I know that you know, for for a lot of like our viewers and fellow teachers, we're home now with children over the summer. And so, what are some of the things that you're doing to inspire creativity at home with your kids, or like you know, just in general? Like, what are some of the things that you're starting to to think about? This is going to sound like a total cop out answer, but it's a it's a good answer. Um, <laughs> let them let them be bored. Like seriously, let your okay. kids be bored. Um, you know, mine have everything that they want and they need. You know, our kids, uh, Tony, you have kids. Like we give them everything that we can, and we want to make them happy. We want to entertain them, and we want to keep them um, motivated. And so we always put things in front of them. And I think the best thing that I've done is you know, okay, we got to turn devices off. We got to put things away. Uh, I don't know. You can go outside. You can, you know, go in the basement and find some stuff to play with. And surprisingly, they'll find stuff to do. And that's when, like, they're, they have an imagination. Like, we don't tap into that anymore. Um, yeah. I'm not saying it's easy. and it, it's, But I see different results when my kids are bored. Mm. Um, if, you know, especially my youngest, um, he loves to play video games. He loves Fortnite. That is, that is his jam right now. Um, but when you turn off devices and you kind of take away television and you say, okay, well, you have stuff in the house to play with, like physical toys or whatever, um, they'll, they'll, they'll start to explore a little bit. They'll start to, um, you know, uh, whether he's either building something with Lego or he's playing with like little, uh, you know, men, army men or whatever they are. Um, he's, he's doing that on his own. It's like an imagination going. So that's what I find to be the most effective. It's not coming up with the next thing to put in front of them. It's kind of letting them find those things. Um, mm-hmm. I'm also a parent who loves to build with my hands, like um, especially for school projects, I probably go overboard <laughs> at times, but I, I, I like to model that for them. We build a ton of stuff, a ton of stuff. My favorite part of the school year is uh, we do trunk or treat where you decorate your trunk um, of your vehicle and you park <laughs> it in the school parking lot. And so everybody goes to your car and oh, hand cool. in, but you decorate the vehicle. Well, we, we decorate that's, like we, you know, we cardboard, glue, you know, balloons. I'll, I'll have oh, to show yeah. you picture sometime. But it, the idea is like to show them like yeah. what you can create with you know nothing with just simple materials. And so um, I, I really, I really enjoy that because you know, again, it's easy to put this in front of them and say, "Here, go look at this cool app. Yeah. It's really great. You can do some magical things." But boredom. That's, I that's love it. Nice. Let yeah. them be bored. Yeah, and they ha- and I know my son. He's He's turning nine. Actually, oh my god, he just turned nine. I'm such a bad mom. But he, <laughs> that, was, that was on fun day. Yeah. So he hates being bored. He doesn't know. He mm-hmm. literally like he gets so anxious that he doesn't even know what to do with himself when he's bored. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So I, I hear you on that. Trunk or treat. I didn't even know yeah. Trunk or treat. I know this was a thing. I know. Is this a Midwestern thing. Like I live on the East Coast. Like I grew up in Canada. Like I never heard of this. Yeah, we didn't. I didn't do it as a kid either. I, I don't know if it was a you know a Midwest thing. I didn't do it as a kid. You know, grow up in Texas, but here it was, it's a thing. And so, um, uh, yeah. 
I, I get that's excited for it every, right. every year. I'll send you pictures. Gotta bring yeah, it. Yeah. See what that's about. <laughs> It'll be interesting because I don't see my my kids going door to door during like the next few months getting candy through Halloween. So it'll be very interesting to see what <laughs> what iteration uh, yeah. Halloween will have. I know. Yeah, and I see Leona's in California. Hi, Leona. I, I Hi, know she Leona. has it too. So, all right, learning something new every day. Um, <laughs> Well, I know, Emmanuel, you mentioned, you know, some things that included technology, some that don't, that are more analog. And so um, I know we'll be talking about sketchnoting today. Um, and so for those who are unfamiliar with sketchnoting, what is it and and how can it help um, kids to tell their stories? Sure. Um, so sketchnoting kind of has it's a pretty broad, I guess, umbrella of what it is and what it can do. Um, kind of in the, the easiest definition is just taking information that you're hearing, seeing, um, and processing that and then creating some type of notes based on that that are visual. That can include text, that can include um, drawings, that can include clip art, um, but kind of mashing those things up and um, processing that information in a way that makes sense to you. There's, there, there are some forms and structures that people do follow with it, but um, bottom line is that you're drawing, you're creating imagery based on what you're hearing and seeing um, in, um, in a lecture, on a podcast, in a video, in a song. Um, the other side of it, uh, what, which is what I really enjoy, is the design side of it. So um, with kids, you know, we often ask them to create things all the time. Um, you know, posters, graphics, videos, presentations, um, things that require some kind of brainstorming or some kind of thinking and, and communicating, especially between um, classmates or even with us as colleagues. And so the other side of sketch noting, or what I call, what I have kind of learned learned to call it is, is visual thinking, is using imagery as well, but to show what we're thinking, to brainstorm an idea, to plan out a story. Um, so for example, um, an example of that, 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 that was really kind of speaks volumes, is uh, a couple of years ago, I was in Boston and I got to work with a third graders um, on writing. And, and we're gonna try to figure out how can we dr incorporate drawing into writing? So we started off the class asking kids, kind of tell us about your morning. And you, and you can do this with a lot of kids and usually their answer is, you know, well, I woke up, I ate breakfast and I came to school. And we all know that there was more involved in the morning um, than just that. So kind of do the same exercise, but this time we asked them to draw it out. Like what, it, draw out, um, and essentially, essentially we taught them a storyboard, kind of break up your morning from the moment you woke up to the moment I was standing here in front of you and, and, and draw out what your, your day was like. And that's when you start to see details that kids wouldn't necessarily communicate to you verbally. So now they have this visual of their morning that they can then use uh, for writing. They can then use to tell this narrative because you have kids who like, they will decorate their bedspread. They will show you the table that they're sitting at. They'll show you the four chairs that are pulled out. They'll show you a cat sleeping in the corner. They'll show you the bowl of cereal that they were eating, but they weren't gonna tell you that. So that becomes almost a, 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 a guide for them when they write because now they have details that they can add. And you as a teacher, you as an educator can look at that and say, hey, well, tell me more about that. Tell me more about what you saw. Tell me more about uh, this cat sitting on the chair. What's the cat's name? How can you put that into the narrative? Yeah. Um, same thing with planning videos, um, storyboarding videos, uh, drawing those out. Um, prototypes before you build to draw ideas out. Maybe you're building for someone designing for someone, you want to take a rough draft of that and show it to someone. Um, that all kind of is, in a nutshell, kind of visual thinking and sketch noting. Um, I use it both ways. Uh, I really enjoy the design side of it because with that, I'm, I'm pulling ideas out of kids' heads mm -hmm. because they're working on a project. So tell me more, tell me more. A lot of modeling goes into that. You know, I had to draw a little bit to kind of get them going and they contribute to the drawing. But the idea is that we're 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 kind of we're on the same page. Like we know what's going on. We're both looking at what it is we're talking about. Um, it's surprising how well it works with adults. I mean, how often do we work with adults where we have ideas or projects and, and it's all just very verbal or it's a very bulleted list of things yeah. to do? Um, that can we don't all process that way. I know I don't. <laughs> I, I still get you know the little digs here and there into me like, oh, there's manual drawing again, like. Because that's just how I think. I have to see things played out um, in, in a way, and and they're just nothing fancy. They're just sketches, simple, simple sketches. Our um, director of learning services, we were planning out professional development, and um, 
he we drew a kind of almost like we called it the Candyland map, and it was how a, a teacher would progress through professional development in a set amount of time in a couple of years or whatever. Um, and but we got it, we understood it, we knew that how that was going to go and where the pieces um, would fit. So that's a long definition. I said it would be short, but. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I, I love this. I also think it's really important to think about the kinds of learners we have and that there are some learners that they are doodlers and they're visual and like we're providing, you know, we're being responsive to the types of learners that we have in our class. And I think sketchnoting is becoming more and more commonplace, not enough, but like I think teachers are realizing the power of sketchnoting. And honestly, Manuel, I never thought of it the way you said it about like, having the kids and it's so simple and duh, like having them draw and then yeah. using their drawing. Like, and I think that a lot of people definitely, you know, have done that in the past and, but they didn't realize that like there's techniques and strategies that you can actually like build on through sketch noting. And so that's why I'm so excited that you're here today because we can kind of like formulate, like, I mean, you're going to talk about that, right? Like what are some of the ways that you, would actually get started into sketchnoting. Like, and how, like for a teacher who's watching this right now, who's like, I love this, but like, I'm gonna be virtual next year. Like, what are some of the things that you might, you know, help them with that through their thinking process of getting started and doing it in a virtual environment? Sure, um, I, you know what, one of the big pieces uh, of this is, is definitely, we, we've been doing this for a while with kids. We, we've been using drawings. We've been using uh, visuals. We just tend to use it with younger kids. Yeah. It's when kids get to, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade, middle school, high school, we don't use that anymore. I don't know if it's the idea of, you know, well, they're older and they should, they should know how to do right. things this way. And that's for younger kids. Um, you know, that's not the case. So it's not to take, any, take away anything that we're already doing. Um, we do do a lot of that stuff. I think we just forget that it's very valuable as kids get older. Now, as we move towards a virtual environment, um, the same thing goes. I mean, it's still some of the same structures that we can use with kids. Um, the difference is maybe it's going to be recorded or maybe it's a live webinar. Um, maybe it's, um, you know, partially filling something out or drawing something out in students, um, continuing that, that, uh, that thinking. Um, I, I will say before, I start with anyone um, when I talk about sketch noting or I talk about drawing. There is a lot of apprehension, and there's a lot of like, I can't draw. I mean, that's probably the biggest obstacle. The rest of the stuff kind of falls into place. It really does. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys today. Is kind of just to build some confidence in drawing, um, because as soon as we think about drawing, we think about art. Um, and and I want you to kind of shift your thinking from um, drawing as an artistic process towards drawing as a thinking process. Uh, so I have a couple activities to do just to have a little bit of fun with drawing and to show you that, you know, as long as you can put a pencil to paper, you can create a drawing. You're going to add words. You're going to add text. You're going to be, you're going to verbalize it as, as well. So um, that's, that's what I wanted to show you today. Um, and I'm excited about that. So I'm going to attempt to show my iPad here. I think we have it kind of yeah. set up. Perfect. And I'm um, going to go ahead and share in the chat yeah. here the um, Spark page that you set up, um, which you can access all of these files in here. Okay. And then also, uh, which uh, tool will you be using, uh, Manual, for this um, sketch noting? So today I'm going to use uh, Adobe Fresco, which I'm super excited about. Uh, I've been playing with this for a little while now. And um, Adobe Fresco, if you haven't used it, is um, – it's a drawing app. It's an app that's available um, in iOS and I believe Android. And yeah. um, it's really nice. And one of the nice features about using Fresco is um, you can, are you able to see my iPad? Yep, we're putting it on here now. There we go. So um, let me go back there. The one, one thing about Fresco is that you're uh, able to use layers. Um, and if you're not familiar with how layers work, it's kind of imagine stacking transparencies <laughs> that we all used to use and drawing something on each transparency. And if you need to remove one of those, you can, so that um, you're not kind of messing with the entire drawing. You're kind of working um, in, a, in a stacked drawing, if, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm gonna skip uh, skip down. I, I gave if uh, the link, I believe Clara or Tanya, you guys posted the link to um, the download. There's some files yep. in there that if you'd like to use, 
that would be great. Um, there are three files in there. There's a PDF file, a Photoshop file, and a PNG. And it really all depends on how you want to do this. And, and you guys can definitely look at this, look at it a little later. But um, the PDF is just meant to be printed. So if those of us are going back to school and we have some chance to work with kids, um, you can just print the PDF and you can allow your kids to draw on top of it. Um, if you're using Fresco, if you want to try that out, um, you can upload that file directly into Fresco. It's a Photoshop file. And then, uh, but if you're not using Fresco or using another, another tool where it allows you to bring import images, the other file that's in there is the PNG. Um, and you can upload that just to any of um, the any of the drawing programs that you use. So try to take care of everybody um, on that. So what we're going to do is the first activity we're going to do in Fresco is um, called Squiggle Birds. Um, <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite activities because uh, I don't know it's fun and it's kind of nerdy. But um, <laughs> this is what I want you to do. If you have a piece, if you have some paper, if you had a chance to upload this. To, uh, to Fresco or to your favorite drawing tool, is I want you to create several squiggles onto your canvas. So I, I kind of drew an example of what a squiggle looks like um, there on the page. But I want you to draw several of them and just kind of like loop your, there's, you can't really mess it up. So I'll give you guys, everybody a minute. Tanya, Claire, I'm not sure if you guys are doing this. I think you guys have done it before, but you know. I had a daughter took my iPad with Fresco, so I am no, I am stuck in analog no. right now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to create a few of these random squiggles. So now what we're going to do with these squiggles is we are actually going to turn them into birds. Um, I actually got this activity from Dave Gray, who is a um, – uh, a visual recorder, a visual thinker, who actually lives here in St. Louis. Um, funny enough, I didn't find that out till after I had uh, connected with him. But this was an activity that I found through his site, GameStorming, and his book. And the idea here is that we're going to take these squiggles that we made in about, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds, and we're actually going to turn them into birds. I know this sounds really crazy, um, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to change colors. You do not have to. And all we have to do in order to change these into birds is add the, the, the things that make a bird a, a bird. So um, the first thing that comes to my mind is a beak and then an eye, maybe a couple of legs. And if you want, maybe a tail feather. And just like that, you have a bird. No matter what your squiggle looks like, if you add an eye, a beak, and legs, again, attributes of a bird, your squiggle will turn into a bird. You may have to spin your paper around a little bit. But look at this. Now, the idea with this is not that I want you to learn how to draw birds. The idea is that I want you to be able to draw and communicate an idea quickly without really thinking that I'm, I have to draw a bird I have this worry that I can't draw a perfect bird. Um, you don't have to be an artist to draw these things. So just like that, you have birds. No matter what you do, you can even change the direction the bird is, I guess, flying or perched. Now you can also do this with other animals. Maybe you've got a, a class mascot or something that you want to do this with. But it all works the same. So what I want you guys to do is to, when you have some time today, or even now, is to do this, is to print this out or upload it to Fresco or upload it to your favorite drawing app. <laughs> and I want you to add some squiggles and create some birds. But then I'm hoping that you share this out. I want you to share it out on social media and show the birds that you created. Um, there is some some incentive to doing this, and I'll, I'll talk about that here in, in a little bit. Um, but yeah, give it a try. I want to see what you have. Um, if you'll tag um, Adobe and myself and using the Adobe hashtag, Adobe Edu Create uh, Creative, um, share it on social media and show like how quickly you can draw a bird. And that's how I want you to approach drawing. You're not worried about what the bird looks like. You're not worried about how big it is, what color it is. 
we're just talking about a bird, so we need to communicate that idea really, really, really quickly. I also highly recommend that you only give kids, uh, maybe in the beginning, um, one color. I use two colors here just just because, well, I don't know, I just thought it looked nicer. But I, I encourage you just to use one color. Um, that way kids don't get caught up in, you know, I need a green because I have grass, I need a yellow because I need a sun. Um, they'll get creative with that. They'll get creative in how they, they mark color um, with using just one. So, um, and then eventually you can kind of release that and allow, the, allow them to bring more colors in. But this just gets you comfortable with drawing. This just gets you excited about uh, putting pencil to paper. I'm gonna finish my last squiggle. With my bird. All right. Yeah, what do you guys think? Is it's, everyone so cool. it's always amazing to see just how they come to life, even though it's all these different squiggles. I remember from ISTE Creative Constructor Lab. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's just, you know, everybody tries to challenge you. They'll do like, you know, squiggles like that. I'm like, nope, you can you can put a beak. You can put some <laughs> eye. I can put some feet. And, it, and it's still, it's a bird. It's not a perfect bird, right? But it still yeah. looks so much cuter than mine. <laughs> What's that? Yours still looks so much cuter than mine. <laughs> you no, I'm sure, I'm sure yours looks perfectly fine. Yours <laughs> perfectly fine. masterpieces. So we'd love that? to see uh, the comment from the chat. Um, Shay says they're, they're masterpieces. <laughs> they're masterpieces. So if you, if you are following along with us. We'd love to, you know, it's a little bit tricky to kind of show that, but comment how that's going for you. And um, yeah, hope you can follow along either on pen and paper or using Adobe Fresco. Yeah, and they can tweet their stuff, you know, at, um, uh, either mention at Adobe for EDU or definitely tag hashtag Adobe EDU creative. Yeah. And I so, saw um, one, uh, Michelle just joined in. Hi, Michelle. I see Rebecca's here too. Hi, Rebecca. Um, so for those who are just joining in, um, uh, Manuel is just sharing how you can have just to inspire confidence with drawing. And, and um, if you have different squiggles on a piece of paper, see how you can make that each of those into a bird, which is pretty amazing. And Manuel, I don't know if you want to have any anything else to add to that for those who are just joining in. No, that's I mean that's just it. We we want you know the biggest challenge, the biggest hurdle is um, is is confidence in drawing, confidence in putting pencil to paper, and um, this is an activity that hopes to ease some of that. Younger kids, not a problem. They love to draw. They love to put you know pencil to paper. Um, it's some of your older students and even adults that we kind of forget. Um, that we can we can draw. It's not about um, creating this beautiful piece. It's about communicating an idea. So um, and you can do it really really quickly. Um, I have one more activity. If we, if we have time for one one yep. more quick Sounds activity. Great. And as you're switching so, over, Rebecca says she loves the activity. Great for creative development. Makes us switch perspectives and think in new ways and make new connections between different ideas. This Rebecca girl so smart. <laughs> 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 She's fantastic, isn't she? She right. really is. She's my golden <laughs> girl. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is a um, a second activity that I have in there to kind of also kind of get some confidence in drawing and kind of kind of push your thinking a little bit um, with it. And I, I just for no other reason called it "What about Blob?" because we're just <laughs> many, um, blobs and. Uh, Fresco is great for this because you, there's brushes on here that are called live brushes. And so these blue blobs that I used, I used a watercolor brush. And if you haven't seen how that works, um, it, you have to play with it. You have to play with the brush. But um, I've given you this file. And the idea of this is kind of think when you when we were younger or even now when we're outside and we sit up and we look at clouds and the clouds always look like something, right? Mm. Um, so that's this, that's this kind of thing. That's this kind of thinking is that uh, I need to communicate something really quickly. I can probably create this blob and then go in and draw the details later. So I've kind of already cheated and I've already added um, a blob in there. So, um, excuse me, I already had a drawing. So I had a, this drawing to the far left, kind of looks like a circle with, um, I don't know, lumps on the ends. Um, to me, that looked like um, a bear with headphones. Again, it's like so it's cute. I know, it's so cute. Things in 
add in the details in later. So your your challenge on this is to take that file, print it out, upload it to Fresco or um, another app, and take these blobs, spin your paper around. That's kind of nice about um, some of these drawing apps is that you can spin these around and challenge yourself to create, turn it into something new. Um, it's kind of easy, you know, to take something and maybe this this right here easily looks like a pair of sunglasses, maybe. Oh, cool. but, but maybe I might challenge myself and kind of push past what it is. And I didn't I, I, I didn't cheat on this, so I don't know what I'm gonna draw this into. Look at this guy! I made him into a tortoise. I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> And you can cheat a little bit. This is, oh, this is not going to get big. Yeah, that's good enough. So for those of us who are in here are old enough that remember, oh, this is bad. Um, is that an old, old telephone? Oh, old telephone. Oh, yeah. Right. But the cord couldn't couldn't leave the room. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that could be a telephone. Manuel, uh, the one on there. That's a pizza. It's pizza. Where? Yeah, oh, this, no, like this one. Yeah. So again, this is just having fun with putting pencil to paper. That is, you know, that's an okay thing to do with kids. Put the pepperoni, and, pepperoni. pepperoni. <laughs> we like, uh, my kids like lunchtime, like, hmm. <laughs> pepperoni and pineapple. I know that some people don't like pineapple. Oh, actually a good combination. I know some people are, feel very adamant about that, but. Oh, like, so like, good. Like pineapple, probably better than ham and pineapple, actually. Oh, yeah, way better, way <laughs> better. I don't know what it is. So yeah, that's your challenge. I want you to um, print this out again, or use your app and yeah. and show us what you've created and what you've drawn. Um, I should have looked at these. I didn't want I didn't want to cheat. I wanted to come in and uh, really have to think through these drawings. But tweet these out or post these on Instagram um, if you can. And um, I want to see what you guys create. And so what I was telling you earlier about Fresco. What's kind of cool about Fresco is that you have layers. Um, and on the far left-hand side, I can turn off these layers. You can see these little square thumbnails. I can turn off certain layers. So if I can just, I can just turn off the drawing part, and then I just have the kind of the work, not work, but the bottom layer that's just showing. And I can draw. I can do another set of drawings. I can do another layer, and then maybe recreate this in a different way. So earlier, when I did this, I saw this as a person. I love this. This is a fun activity. And it's a fun activity to do with like the iPad for kids. Oh I yeah, absolutely. It. Oh my god, that looks Ooh. like the guy Ooh. from my my son's reading it. Uh something diaries. Oh my god, I sound like the worst teacher. What is it? <laughs> I mean, that looks this like this is oh, like comment, comment. What's the book that the kids like when they're nine years old? Is it Dear Dumb Diary? I don't know. But oh, oh, like oh, diary of a wimpy kid. I don't know. I don't know. Like I, this, I butchered this guy, but that's okay. Yeah. But so that's, yeah, that's kind of nice about um, uh, Adobe Fresco is that you can, you have layers. So I can always turn that guy off because I didn't want to look at him. <laughs> he looked a little yeah. scary. That's, that's um, so cool too with the, with the layers too, because that is a skill that is, you know, with mm -hmm. any more advanced design too. So if you're using Photoshop later on or Illustrator yeah. and, just that concept of, of understanding how to hide and, and bring in new layers is um, so powerful and easy, obviously, with Fresco. So, Clara, we have Toby. Hi, Toby. I just want to say hi. We have a lot of people that kind of that come regularly, and I want to just give them a bit of a shout out. First of all, uh, hi, Toby. Who Remember, we met Toby at FETC. Toby's awesome. I remember, I remember so, in Miami. That was so yeah. fun. Oh, those days, it feels like years ago. It was just like, I know. <laughs> um, I want to say also hi to William, who literally is like always here. He's the best. So hi, William. It's good to see you. And he, I, I'm so happy that you're able to take the things that you're coming and being able to apply them in your curriculum. We, we're excited for that. And I see Michelle Roberts. Um, hi, Michelle. Uh, so yeah, no, this is so great. Um, the monkey looks like planet <laughs> with wings. I saw that. <laughs> but this is so great, Manuel. I think that um, you know. I also think that drawing is so therapeutic. You know, as we talk about reflection, <laughs> which is <perfect. laughs> yeah. that better. But I think that this is also such a great way for kids to be able to like to like to be able to explore their thoughts, their thinking, their feelings. Um, and I know, you know, 
school circa 2020, 2021 is not going to be what we're used to. It's a new normal. And I think it's really going to be important for us to be really mindful of like where, um, you know, of, 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 of providing the time and space for kids to be able to, to, to have the ability to tell their stories, to draw, to, to be able to, to really show their, their thinking in, in ways that um, mean something for them. So I think this is really powerful. Um, so as we talk about reflection, why is storytelling important? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to answer that question. Nope. And it, okay. it was like, <laughs> like making it. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, like, what are your thoughts on that? And what are your thoughts, those of you watching, like why is storytelling important with young learners, why do you think that I've given my thoughts a little early? Oh, that's, that's great. What, no. anyway, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on I mean, that? I, I think it's an easy it's, it's an easy and quick way for students to express themselves. Um, drawing is a little more natural and a little more easier for certain, for, I'm gonna say for, for, for many young kids. Um, you know, I've, I've been in the past uh, year and a half, I've worked with some speech therapists and some counselors like how can I incorporate drawing into um, that kind of learning? And they're like, we've been doing it, we've always been doing it. Um, and especially with counselors, when you work with kids, it kind of goes back to when I was telling you the kids were drawing their morning out, um, counselors will use it with children to express themselves, draw mm -hmm. out you know, what might be going on, what are you thinking, how, what is your experience at home, what are your ex experiences at school? And those come out in drawings. If you're not worried about you know, spelling a word, you're not worried about you know, punctuation, you're just expressing yourself. And um, I think that's important. And, and I want to somehow um, continue to continue to work in that direction because especially with, you know, the way the state of everything right now, with kids going back to school or not going back to school, um, you know, we gotta, we gotta help kids work through that. And I think this, there's, for, in my head right now, there's something here that's very valuable that we can use with students when they come back to school or when they're working from home remotely. Um, expressing themselves, letting you know. Uh, we tend to you know, tell kids, okay, we're gonna write narratives, let's write. Just write about what you like. Just, just write about something. You like, you like Fortnite, just write about Fortnite. Um, or, or, or write about you know, the park you went to. Well, if we have them maybe draw that out, then that their entire like, paper, that their narrative they need to write is sitting in front of them now. And then all they have to do is go back, not all they have to, but they, they can go back and begin to um, break that photo up or break that image up and create some kind of narrative out of that um, and, and process what's in their head. So um, that's where I'd like to see some of this, my work go in that direction. I think that's valuable. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, I see we have a few comments in the chat too. Um, Diane says it's, it's kind of meditative for students. Um, Toby says draw their experience of, mm -hmm. um, you know, being quarantined and, and coronavirus distance learning, uh, document your thoughts, a great way to process that. Uh, Michelle says it's good for middle school a lot to have, um, you know, them gotten out of that. And then I saw uh, Marlene shares, I incorporate sketch noting when I teach math, it brings life to word problems that are already a difficult concept for students. Yes, we're sometimes yeah. in math word problems. Oh my gosh, the memories of Marlene was also, as I was growing up, Marlene used to also tutor me in math because I was terrible at it. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so awesome. So yes, you guys are getting a little bit of my past. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's huge. I think it's it's very important that um, you know we work through work kids work with kids through this. Um, yeah. yeah, and I know if you're you know tuning in or or watching this recording, we'd love to hear from you um, in terms of you know why is story, story storytelling important uh, with your young learners or how you're using sketch noting um, in teaching. And so we have this awesome exit ticket, uh, which I'll share in a moment. And Tanya, I don't know if you want to talk about it a little bit as yeah. I bring it up. Well, you know, we figured we'd make it a little fun. Uh, we created a um, Adobe Libs that <laughs> you can remix. It's a Adobe Spark Post remix template. So it's a remixable template. So when you go to bit.ly forward slash Adobe Libs, it will open right away either on your computer or if you have the uh, app that you'll open it, it'll open in the post uh, Spark Post app on your phone or iPad or whatever. 
whatever it is, and you'll be able to click on it and remix it. So you can change the color of the background, like like the of the, the text. Like you can, you know, you can add a sticker in it, you can get crazy. But we would love for you to share your what you've learned and tweet us at um using the hashtag Adobe EDU Creative. So please, 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 please try it. It's fun. <laughs> and we'll be monitoring those. And I know um, our um, social media manager, Aitikin, is here on the back end with us as well. So she'll be checking those out. Um, but thank you again, everyone, um, for joining in. It was so nice to see everyone after the, the holiday break. Um, and we'll be back next week at, at 12.30 PM Pacific time again. Wait, wait, wait. And, <laughs> <laughs> well, few things. First of all, few, few things. First of all, I wanted to say thank you in advance to Manuel, who is going to be a huge part of our launch. Holy <laughs> smokes! We have our launch coming up. Uh, Clara, you've got to talk about the launch. Yes, there's so much coming up. Oh my god, uh, I can't. My email can't. Can't. It's like we're, we're <laughs> one a million miles a minute. Like it's crazy. <laughs> but we will have I'm going to share my screen actually with the Eventbrite. Um so really quickly here, um you can see this is the Eventbrite for our um everyone can see my screen our Adobe Creative Educator launch party. I can't believe it's already next Tuesday. Um, <laughs> we're launching next week. Oh man. I know. I'm posting this in the chat here. Uh let's see. Another tab. Um so this is going to be our official launch um, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time right here on our Adobe channels. Um, we encourage you to RSVP through this link so you can get the exact link um, to the uh, live stream. But we're going to have an amazing uh, day with keynote speakers. We have Manuel's going to be doing an, another live session uh, with everybody. He has a very special uh, toolkit. Manuel, I don't know if you want to give a sneak peek and, and talk a little bit about it um, that we're giving out. Um, yeah, so I have I have two things. I'm going to add even more. There's even more things. Um, so yeah, if you if you guys can join us next Tuesday, I'm going to do another session a little bit longer, and um, I'm going to um, post a toolkit. So the toolkit's going to be full of activities that you can do with your kids. Kind of um, kind of a couple of the activities we did today, but a couple of other uh, more structured type activities that once you're comfortable drawing, um, it'll give you some kind of uh, a structure to follow with your students. Uh, it's used in the classroom, whether you want to print it out or using it in Adobe Fresco or using it in whatever tool you have. Um, the other thing is, if you were to the two activities we did today, I'm hoping you tweet those out and tag us um, because I want to give away something. I want to give one of these away or give a set of these away. Ooh. I like making stuff. We were talking about, I like to make things. So I like to make journals. Um, so I made um, some journals that I want to give away. I'll give away a set of them. Um, That's so cute. To, to That's cool. Uh, I've already been drawing in mine, but um, yeah, it's just kind of themed what we did today, and it's a great kind of journal to have and keep ideas in. So uh, I'll give that away once once we pick someone, and we'll we'll get I'll get in touch with you, and we'll mail I'll mail them to you. So oh, um, I love that. Yeah. It, yeah. Participate. This is such a great. <laughs> but that's okay. I want one. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so. We're so excited to have you, and thank you again for joining us on Tuesday. We have a crazy lineup. We're gonna have, oh my God, Clara. We have a Jen Williams. Um, we have Sherry Kushner. We have the E Twins. Oh my God, I don't even. I'm like missing Mario and Alberto. There and, and Daniel Kreisa, who is the jealous curator on um, Instagram, and is writing this amazing book about. Uh, the creative process and how anyone can be an artist. And so we'll have her on there as well. I'm um, sharing more about her book. Well, and that we're not even tipping. There's literally like speakers almost every 10 minutes. It's going to yeah. have panels and speakers. It's not like, it's not even like, it's, I, I don't even want to say this is boring. This is awesome. Cause this is fun. Cause you're here and everything, but like, we're going to have like 10 minutes and like a panel and like, it's going to be interactive and there's going to be like polls. So please come. <laughs> and more than that, our, our, the, the, the community is launching. The course is going to drop live. We're going to be starting our level one badging that you can take the course and join. So there's such cool stuff coming up next week. And then the week after, <laughs> I have to that open, 
I'm pulling it up right now. And, I'll and then the week after, we have a crazy Adobe Summit that you have to come to. So we were going to do this live in person in um, Washington, D.C. And obviously that's not happening. So what we've done is we've moved this big in-person summit that we were going to do online. And we have the folks that are producing Adobe Max producing this summit. So it's like... It's legit. You gotta join, and we have three days where we're gonna have. Well, Clara, take it away. Tell talk a little bit about it more. <laughs> yeah, it's a three day summit. So as Tanya mentioned, usually we'd be doing this in person, and of course, uh, we're bummed that we're not able to be in person. But the good news is we can um, be with so many more people online, um, and so it's right there on your computer. You can um, register. Just sound or just sent the um, link to register. But essentially it's three days. The first day is all about um, inspiration. So we have keynote presentations. We have the former uh, Global Teacher of the Year, Andrea Zafirakow, who's joining us from the UK. We have uh, the Adobe um, executive team uh, gonna be sharing their high um, level strategy for education. And then we have breakout sessions with our product team. So if you wanna learn Spark or Character Animator or uh, Premiere Rush, you'll be hands-on with those um, product team members and educators learning more tips and tricks. And then to wrap up the first day, we have a SmackDown with Terry White and Jason Levine, who are our Adobe product evangelists, who usually uh, present to like 15,000 people at max. Um, but this year they're gonna be doing an online just for educators, uh, going through some tips and tricks. And so think of it as like, you remember like if you are familiar with like, like the old school, like, you know, slams from like the end of like Google summits, like they're going to do like, like they're going to do that, but Adobe style. So like SmackDown out doing each other. Bah, 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 bah. That's, so, really <laughs> that's going to be so much fun. <laughs> I always think of like the Ed Camp Smackdown at the end too, where you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, fire. so that'll be really fun. And then day two, we have virtual round tables. So you can go and pop into discussions that will be monitored by, um, or moderated by Adobe education leaders. And then the last day, and you can get this all on the site that I just shared, we have a mini creative jam where we'll be using Adobe XD through a design thinking challenge to prototype an app for your classroom. It's really cool. So, be sure to check that out. Um, again, that's July 28th through 30th. Mark your calendars, um, and it will all be here uh, live on the StreamGo platform. And I'll stop sharing my screen there. As you can see, we're, we're not, you know, not doing anything these weeks. <laughs> so in two weeks, we have these great events. We want you to join us. They're all free. They're all great opportunities for professional learning. Share them, please, with your faculty, with other teachers on social media. We are so excited, and we want to just spread all of this really good stuff happening. And thank you, Nicole. That's so nice of you. My voice, I, I don't know if you're saying me, but I hope so. She said, your voice sounds like a party. It's gonna be a party. Yeah. Yeah, it's a party. All, all day, every day. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you again so much for joining. Manuel, thank you. I know there's so much going on um, with all the work that you're doing. So we really appreciate you taking no the time problem. to go through this with us. No problem. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I love you too. And also, really quick before you leave, make sure to follow Manuel on Twitter. He's at Manuel Herrera33. Um, you can get more of his content. Um, and of course, we'll be here live next Tuesday um, for our launch party. Awesome. Bye, everyone. Bye. Sending love to everyone at home. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye bye.